Hi everyone and welcome back to our series on Durkin. In this video we're going to look at the short poem Ireland 2002. As with Durkin's other two line poems on the syllabus on Famine 1979 and Madman, despite their length there's plenty going on in them that is worthy of analysis. As always we'll begin with some context and background to help deepen our understanding of the poem, then we'll go through the two lines before picking out some ideas and poetic techniques that you could talk about in an essay. So this poem comes from Durkin's 2004 collection, The Art of Life. We've seen how Durkin's poetry spans some great social and political upheavals in Ireland. His poems reference the mass unemployment and immigration of the 70s and 80s, but also the economic upturn in the mid-90s known as the Celtic Tiger. This poem, written in the early 2000s, comes from that period of economic success, but as the poem itself suggests, Durkin didn't necessarily see it in those terms. The Celtic Tiger was a time of unprecedented economic growth in many countries in the world, but particularly in Ireland. We went from a country of limited opportunities and large-scale immigration to a country where ordinary, everyday people owned multiple houses and some even helicopters. This may seem like an exaggeration, but I promise you it's not. Despite the rapid increase in wealth in the country, it wasn't always distributed equally. In his poetry, Durkin often critiques systems of power, the state, the church, the middle classes, and Ireland in the era of the Celtic Tiger is ripe for criticism. In other poems in the same collection, Durkin talks critically about things like foreign holidays, being dizzy from the amount of shoppers he sees in shopping centres, the inequalities that the economic success brings, and in one particularly savage poem called The Celtic Tiger, the pride that parents feel at their daughter's huge salary and her lifestyle. The poems in this collection also explore the impact of the Celtic Tiger on our psyche. Durkin seems to suggest in this collection that our economic success as a country made us more materialistic and less kind as a people. There's also an evident fear for Irishness in these poems as he talks about a world that has somehow gotten smaller. Now as he explores in another poem in the collection, it's as easy to hop on a plane and go to France for a weekend away as it is to go to Kerry or West Cork. So this poem then, Ireland 2002, set in the context of the Celtic Tiger and with the benefit of reading some of the other poems in the collection is quite revealing. Let's take a look at it again before analysing. Ireland 2002. Do you ever take a holiday abroad? No, we always go to America. As we can see, What's being said here is really quite simple and straightforward. The speaker is asking an unnamed person if they ever go out of the country on holiday and the person responds that they don't, they always go to America. This poem is very much characteristic of Durkin. We've seen how the other two two-line poems are masterfully turned over such a short space of time. The first line acts as a way into the poem, a simple statement or a question, while the second one adds depth and complexity. If you took both of these lines separately, there wouldn't really be much art to them. Do you ever take a holiday abroad? Is a very simple question. Similarly, the response on its own is also simple. No, we always go to America. But when you put the two together, you get something more complex. We know here in Ireland that this is not America. To travel to America, one would have to go abroad. So has the person misunderstood the question? Well, either that or there's something more complex going on here. Durkin in this poem is exploring a number of ideas. Firstly, he's suggesting that the idea of the world being narrowed, being shrunk by the possibilities of rapid transport. In Ireland's past, when emigrants used to leave Ireland for America, there was a tradition of having a wake for them before they left because it was as if they were dying. America was so far away, it was unlikely they would ever see Ireland again. During the years of the Celtic Tiger, however, people used to pop to New York to do their Christmas shopping. Wealth and progress allowed the two worlds to come closer together. So perhaps he's suggesting here that America no longer feels like it's abroad. It's only a few hours away. You could fly from Ireland to the east coast of America in around the same time that it might take to drive from Belfast to Cork. This poem could also be exploring the Americanization of Irish culture. You don't need to travel to America anymore to know what America is like. We eat American fast food, we watch American television, we use American slang, and some of us even have American accents. It is in this context that Durkin fears for Irishness or the Irish culture. In another poem from the same collection called The Far Side of the Island, there's a line that goes, although I'm globally sad, I'm locally glad. Now this is very much representative of the mood in our poem here, Ireland 2002. Finally, a third potential interpretation is that he is critiquing the person that is responding to the question. Durkin has framed the poem as dialogue for a reason. Perhaps here he is drawing our attention to the respondent, the person answering the question. Durkin may be highlighting this unnamed person as characteristic of an Irish person who, with all the wealth and the hype of the Celtic Tiger years, has lost their own sense of identity, their own sense of Irishness. They now truly believe that Ireland and America are the same place. I believe that it is a blend of all three of these interpretations that Durkin is aiming for in this poem. So, this short two-line poem packs in a lot of meaning. 
something seemingly obvious and clear actually carries a lot deeper and more complex ideas. Durkin, writing in the years of the Celtic Tiger, fears the damage that wild economic success will do to the Irish people, their country, but also their psyche, how they see themselves in the world. Through a snapshot of dialogue and an attention-grabbing second line, Durkin has captured all of these fears and more. The two-line poem is characteristic of Durkin, and it's a really effective way of delivering a message with power to an unsuspecting reader. Another example, which unfortunately is not on the Leaving Cert syllabus, but is really useful to look at, is the poem that comes before this one in that collection. It's called Ireland 2001, as opposed to Ireland 2002, and it goes like this. Where's my bikini? We'll be late for mass. Again, you can see the technique being employed here. It's a simple statement followed by something that does not seem to fit. In the difference between these two statements, the opposition between them, we find the complexity and the deeper meaning that Durkin is aiming for. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that it's been useful to your study of Durkin and his poetry. Please don't forget to download the quiz that goes with this poem. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Also, feel free to leave a comment, a suggestion, or even a like.